Uh, hi, everybody. Um, thanks so much for inviting me to uh, present on uh, how we're using Marathi Share um, and Marathi. Um, so my name is Giselle Block. I'm with the U.S. Fish and Wildlife Service, um, the National Wildlife Refuge System, and uh, more specifically, uh, a program called the Inventory and Monitoring Program. Um, over the last several years, uh, our program has been working with refuges National Wildlife Refuges here in our Pacific Southwest region, which is California and Nevada, um, to help them improve how they do conservation on refuge land. So I'm going to just give an overview of, of how we're using Marathi and Marathi Share um, and how we're integrating it with other tools to help them um, do conservation better. So just to give you a little overview for folks who might be unfamiliar, um, the National Wildlife Refuge System is uh, over, has over 150 million acres of protected land throughout the United States. Um, and you can sort of see its mission here. Uh, my program in particular, we are working with the 50 National Wildlife Refuges shown on the map here, um, covering California and Nevada. Um, our inventory and monitoring program started about um, 2010, 2011. And pretty much our, our focus is helping uh, these refuges um, do conservation better through improving their science, improving their capacity to actually practice um, adaptive management or results-based management. Uh, one of the big issues <clears throat> we have in the National Wildlife Refuge System, and I think um, throughout the Department of Interior in the United States is we have uh, continual decreases in staff and budgets, and this year is expected to be some pretty major cuts. Um, we actually have in the president's budget some whole programs that are being eliminated um, uh, or proposed to be eliminated next year. Um, we have incredibly passionate staff um, trying to uh, continue doing everything they've always done with increasingly limited resources. Um, we have um, one of the things we've observed in our evaluation of our refuges when our program started was there seemed to be um, this really uh, uh, big disconnect between uh, the decisions and the management actions they take on the ground and the results. Um, so there's really not a link between their decisions and their data. Um, and in the realm of uh, their conservation plans that they had already developed, uh, most of their goals were very general, um, so you didn't really know ex exactly what they were trying to achieve, and a lot of their objectives were really actions, they weren't results. Um, so uh, looking at this big problem in order for us to really help the refuges the best we can in the realm of science and collecting information, study design, and so on, we needed to really make sure that we're focusing our work um, where it's needed most, um, where they can get the greatest benefit, um, and, and really trying to help them practice adaptive management and be more efficient with their limited resources. Um, so really, it's two key questions as we work with refuges to develop more focused conservation plans. You know, how should they best allocate their limited resources, and how do we promote that adaptive um, management approach? Um, so how are we doing this? So a few years ago, we uh, discovered the open standards um, and uh, decided to try it out. Um, and like I said, a lot of these refuges already have conservation plans, but they're like these huge shopping carts of everything they want to do. Um, and there's really no prioritization of anything. Um, and then, of course, the, the linking decisions with the data they collect, we were seeing that that, that connection wasn't there. So we are really focused on identifying their priorities, you know, so what targets do you really care about? Uh, what attributes and indicators do you need to use to evaluate, you know, how those conservation targets are doing? Uh, of all your threats, which threats are the greatest? Of all the strategies you'd like to implement or are implementing, which are the most important? Um, and what type of data should you be collecting? Um, one of the things we also found um, when we evaluated all our refuges in this region is that there's just an enormous amount of data being collected. Um, and as you know, you know, collecting data, analyzing the data, reporting on it takes a lot of time and they're doing a lot of surveys um, and maybe they don't need to do all that they're doing. Um, maybe it should be more focused. 
<clears throat> and so as we started working with refugees, um, over time we've developed sort of a toolbox um, and really the open standards for the practice of conservation has been sort of the overarching framework within which we're working. Um, and within that, we use a variety of other um, methods and tools to take them through this conservation planning process. Um, we have this guide to identifying party resources of concern and an associated tool. Uh, we have a guide to developing inventory and monitoring plans. Uh, we, we use Google Sites and Google Spreadsheets quite a bit. Um, we have a survey prioritization tool. Um, and we use Marathi Desktop and Marathi Share. So the open standards and Marathi are sort of like the core. Um, and we use a variety of other tools to integrate. So I'm going to take a project we're working on right now and show you um, and try to demonstrate how we're integrating all these pieces. Um, so really, when we think of when I think about Marathi and Marathi Share, you know, one of the questions I was asked for this presentation, how am I using it and maybe what improvements will we like to see in the future. So really, uh, the main uh, way in which we're using Marathi and Marathi Share is really to generate conservation planning information, um, uh, doing the target viability, looking at, you know, assessing the viability in, of all the um, different targets, doing those threat summaries, building those conceptual models, building the results chain. So we really use Marathi quite a bit, um, these particular tools in Marathi to do that. Um, and another way that Marathi is used quite a bit is really among these conservation projects, the project managers uh, to develop the plan and the facilitators. We're using Marathi and Marathi Share quite a bit, you know, putting information in, especially with Marathi Share now, it's pretty sweet because we can all, um, you know, check the project out, check it back in and put the information in and pull it out. Um, it's not really being used by the staff for this conservation planning project. Um, it's really by the project managers and the facilitators um, putting in and taking out information that's generated um, in Marathi. Um, in the future, we'd really like to see that Marathi share is actually used by our regional leadership um, where they can actually evaluate our refuges across the refuges, look at threats across refuges, look at targets across refuges, look at how they're doing on their goals and objectives. Um, looking at their work plans, looking at their um, reports. Um, we're not doing that at this point. Uh, right now, there's this thing called uh, refuge reviews where regional staff, regional leadership go out to the refuges and do a site visit, but there's really not been a framework for them to really see in detail, you know, how are they doing? Um, we'd really like to see in the future that Marathi Share is used, actually used for work planning and evaluation. Um, I'll talk a little bit later about how we're doing that now, um, but ideally we'd like to see it used in that way ultimately um, and so on. So I'm going to use this example of a project that's actually ongoing right now. Uh, it's the what's called the San Francisco Bay National Wildlife Refuge Complex. So in our region there's uh, these there's 14 complexes and they're made up of each are made up of two or more refuges. In this case, the San Francisco complex is made up of seven refuges. So we're along the um, California coast uh, in the San Francisco Bay Area, it's the San Francisco Bay Estuary, um, around which all these refuges are situated. Um, and I'll just say that, uh, you know, although they're all situated in this one geographic location, each refuge actually has quite a unique uh, set of species, communities, and ecosystems. So they're not all of the same type. So they really struggle with they get a single budget and that budget is shrinking and their staff is shrinking and it's like how do we deal with this you know complex array of ecosystems um, uh, and divvying up resources um, so the project essentially the end product of the project we're doing now is they really want this five-year work plan that helps the complex leadership decide how to best allocate their limited resources um, they really want to come away with this with a framework for doing annual work planning and evaluation um, and they really want to do it as a whole. Right now, it's like each refuge has its resources and they're all sort of competing for those complex resources and they really want to see sort of a more holistic approach. Um, they don't really have an inventory monitoring plan that really says what exactly are the top priority um, surveys that they should be doing. 
Um, and more importantly, these manageable workloads. You know, when I first started working with this group, um, I asked, you know, how many of you work more than 40 hours a week? Um, and almost everybody raised their hand. And so these people are really killing themselves to try to do everything they've always done with increasingly limited resources. Um, and it really, um, I think it really um, degrades morale over time. Um, it's definitely really difficult. So like yeah, I said, the, uh, the um, Hey, Giselle, this is Carrie. You have about five minutes left. So if you okay, thanks. heads up, okay. Okay, thanks. So we have this project framework, the open standards, which I think most of you are familiar with. We have the seven refuges. Um, we have a core team made up of facilitators and the complex leadership, but we're dealing with 30 plus staff that are involved in this project. So it's pretty, it's pretty, um, it's pretty big. Uh, one of the tools that we use um, is Google Sites. Um, because we have so many people in so many different geographic locations, uh, we have this Google Site that we use to share information uh, uh, within um, uh, throughout the complex, all the different staff involved, all the leadership involved, and so on. So this has been a really great tool for um, sharing information. Um, when it comes to selecting conservation targets, uh, we have our own tool and mechanism that we use that's a little bit different from the open standards. Um, we uh, have a set of criteria that are applied to all the species. So uh, first step is we collect all the species lists. We apply this criteria with all of the staff um, and that helps us lump um, those species into conservation targets, either as communities or ecosystems or even individual species. Um, they landed up coming up with about, I think it's like seven or eight targets. Um, most of those are ecosystems. Um, and so the criteria that we use are listed here. I won't go into great detail, but it's just sort of demonstrating, you know, we definitely go in a little bit deeper on the target selection. Um, so here are the targets they selected. Um, we then take that information, those targets, and put them into Marathi and Marathi Share. Uh, we then go into the target viability and goals. Um, Again, we're definitely using Marathi uh, to uh, put this information in and get those viability assessments of those different targets. Um, but what we're really doing in the background with staff, because we can't have 30 staff use uh, Marathi share, it's just impossible to get them all trained up um, and all using it at the same time. So essentially what we do is we use Google Spreadsheets. Um, I'm just gonna show you really quick what that looks like. So here's a Google spreadsheet that everybody has access to. So here we have the target, the KA, um, the KA rationale, uh, whether it was selected or not. So this is a really key point with our groups. They want to measure everything under the sun um, and we're really trying to get them to pare that down to what's most important. So that's what the selected is about, whether it's a yes or no, what the indicator is, Here's your viability, poor, fair, good, very good, and so on. So you sort of get the gist that we're really, when we work with these larger groups, we're using Google Spreadsheets to get them to all collaborate and use the information. And then as the project manager, I'm putting that into Marathi and then allowing them to roll it up. Um, um, in, when it comes to threats, the next step, um, we use the criteria in the open standards, the severity, scope, and irreversibility. Again, just like with viability, we're using these Google spreadsheets um, to get people to do those rankings. Um, and then we, as the project managers, uh, facilitators, put that information to Marathi to generate those threat summaries and then pull that information back out, feed it to the group, have them review it, and so on. Um, I just wanted to make a little um, note here on climate change. I find that this is probably one of the most challenging aspects um, and really takes a lot of time uh, to um, collate all the climate science that's out there, um, look at both the abiotic changes and how those could stress their targets, and then feed that back to the group um, to help them assess the threat of climate um, change and you know sea level rise, changes in fog dynamics, and so on. Um, so this was a collaboration on this particular project um, between the INM program, myself, 
um, Foundations of Success, um, uh, what's called the California Landscape Conservation Cooperative. They've been a major organization in the United States uh, funded by the U.S. Fish and Wildlife Service to help generate and disseminate climate science. Um, unfortunately, they're one of the programs that's, gonna, that's slated to be eliminated next year um, in the president's budget. Um, so here's all their threats. Um, you can see N equals 35. They identified across that complex 35 threats. You know, they are in an urban area, so um, they definitely have a lot of things that are um, stressing their targets out. So, um, but climate change and invasive plants came out on top um, for every single target. So um, we're definitely using Marathi. Um, and Marathi shared to you know, generate these conceptual models and share them with the team so they can review and refine them. And then um, the strategy piece. So we're using this conceptual models generated from Marathi. We, we identify uh, what strategies they're doing now and what where potentially the gaps are. Um, uh, we have come up with our own uh, set of criteria uh, for evaluating impact and feasibility of strategies so they can really pare them down. Um, so, for example, uh, over the last uh, month or so, uh, they generated over 90 management strategies, just an enormous amount of strategies they'd like to implement um, and just way too many than what they have resources for. So we developed our own criteria to help them pare that down. Um, we're now in the process of using, um, doing, you know, developing results chains and objectives, uh, and we're again using Marathi as that basis to build those models uh, and those results chains. And uh, one of the things I didn't mention is how we're sort of getting through this whole process is we uh, have these workshops on a monthly basis, and uh, each workshop is a one to two days in length all the staff come together and we go through a step. So literally yesterday and the day before, we had a results chain workshop. So we're using sticky tarps and um, index cards um, and facilitators and all the staff to get through this step. And now we, uh, the, the project managers are gonna go now, put this in Marathi Share, develop these nice pretty um, uh, models, feed it back to the staff and say, okay, is this, is what, is this what you meant? Um, and then lastly, after uh, we've got the results changed and the models and all the other pieces done, uh, we've got our goals and objectives. Those sort of tell us what type of surveys they need to do. Um, it turns out, you know, a lot of their surveys are tied to their goals and objectives that they've developed um, to date in the process, but they have a lot of other surveys they're doing that aren't necessarily tied to anything. Um, this is a really common feature. Um, people don't want to give stuff up, and when we ask, so what are you using this data for? Um, they can't really tell us, but we've always done it. We can't stop doing it. So. Anyways, this is an Excel-based tool that the National Wildlife Refuge System developed to help people really decide what are the most important um, types of surveys, um, you know, natural resource surveys they should be conducting to help them um, inform their management. So, um, sort of to, to wrap it up, um, you know, when I look at how we're using Marathi and Marathi Share, we're, we're using it in concert quite a bit with Google Spreadsheets um, to help teams get through this process. Um, so I'm really talking about the second bullet here. Um, and we have to do quite a bit of work to get all that information in the spreadsheets into um, Marathi and Marathi Share, and then to go, that going back and forth is time consuming. Um, ideally, it would be great if we could work in Google Spreadsheets and automatically link and upload it into Marathi and Marathi Share. And the reason why I say that is because we can't get all of those staff to become up to speed on Marathi um, at one time. It's just, it's not feasible. Um, and if we could link those databases with, uh, you know, do like a batch upload or something like that, it would really be ideal. Um, and then over the long term, um, using Marathi and Marathi Share for work planning and reporting, um, there's been you know, some improvements to Marathi and Marathi Share in the realm of work planning. And I'll be honest, I have not fully evaluated it 
yet. Right now, we're still working in Google Spreadsheets to evaluate goals, objectives, you know, our timelines and our, you know, what activities are going to be done in what year. Um, and so I can't really say at this point that, you know, it's, it does what we need it to do. You know, with a couple years ago, absolutely it didn't. Um, but it might now, but I haven't fully evaluated it. But again, you know, people, you know, refuge staff will be touching Marathi maybe twice a year and having that, you know, person and then, and then you have turnover on top of it, be familiar with Marathi and be able to get in and out of it and use it effectively. Um, I'm not, you know, I'm not sure we're there yet, but we might be. You know, so to be honest, I haven't fully evaluated it for the work planning and, and reporting. But okay, Giselle, the biggest we, thing is, Giselle, we only have about four yeah. minutes left. So, okay, I'm session. done. Okay, I'm done. Thank you. <laughs> well, th thanks. That was just great. Um, and actually, it tees up some, um, maybe some responses from perhaps Dan and Nick, who are also on the phone. I forgot to mention um, Nick Salaski from Foundations of Success, who is also going to be presenting with um, Dan in the second half. Um, so just to point you guys there, you should have a Q&A box at the bottom of your screen. And if you have any questions for Giselle, um, type in your question and we will read them off. But I'm actually going to put Nick and or Dan on the spot. Um, while people are typing in their questions, if you want to say anything about the new work planning in uh, Marathi, I will, and, uh, and Marathi share, I'll say that um, there's been some recent presentations in this Marathi user group on the new work planning tools, and you can find those at the community page um, on Marathi desktop. But Dan or Nick, while people are typing in their questions, do you want to say anything about um, work planning updates in Marathi? Yeah, um, yeah, thanks, Carrie. This, this is Dan. I'll say just a couple of things. One is that, yeah, it was a major overhaul that took place last November. So if you haven't checked it out, check it out. We've had a really strong response to the new, uh, more user-friendly functionality in the work planning. We have a number of PNC teams that are doing their annual planning and budgeting using that new feature. So definitely encourage you to, to check that out. The, the other thing I would comment on the Google spreadsheet is that we are increasingly enabling that kind of online editing of conservation projects in Marathi Share. And so keep an eye out for that because I think, uh, you know, Giselle, what you were pointing to, uh, ease of data entry in a table type of format. We already can do that in a number of different ways in Marathi Share. And we just need to hear from the users as to which features and functions are, are most important to enable in that kind of web environment. It looks like we have a question um, from Erica, and uh, thanks, Dan, for <laughs> taking that baton. Um, so Erica says, Giselle, are you able to share some of the Google spreadsheets that you are using? <laughs> I have the same problem. Um, not being, not yeah. being able to expect the project implementers to work in Marathi and Marathi Share, and it sounds like Dan has, um, there's defi we, we definitely import spreadsheets directly into Marathi too, so um, Giselle. You willing to share? Yeah, yeah, yeah absolutely, absolutely. I'm willing to share. So, but I want to go back to what Dan said. So, so you can work in sort of a right out of Marathi Share right now. You can work in sort of a spreadsheet realm. Yeah, you can go in and edit progress ratings for any of the strategies and activities that you have, doing the things that you do in Marathi Desktop, but do it in in an online environment. So, hearing from yeah. the community, yeah. So but, but this is this is Nick. Like that, right? This is Nick. It's it's actually fairly limited online editing today, but this is exactly what the Marathi development team needs to hear from you all, the user community. Because, for example, Giselle, if we can look at the spreadsheet that you're developing, we could probably create that same kind of uh, table layout and that kind of format. That might actually be a guide for allowing people to enter stuff. But rather than have you all enter it in, in Google Docs and then have to figure out how to get it from Google Docs over into the Marathi world, we could just use the Marathi world to create that kind of entry table and then it would be in the Marathi thing. And hopefully it wouldn't be a harder learn than people would be using a, a table or a spreadsheet kind of interface that people might already be used to. So yeah. it would be great to hear from folks on this call. I know most people can't speak, but at least going forward to hear from folks on this call, whether that approach would be useful and, and it would be a helpful direction. My hunch is it would be, but it'd be great to hear confirmation. So a couple a uh, couple things. So um, at the end of the slideshow, we'll put up the um, email for the info 
um, the info email from Roddy and Roddy share. So I would encourage people to send messages to the developers through that um, mechanism. You, uh, so we'll post it at the end of this and let us let people know, let the developers know if that would be useful as Nick just asked. Um, and just um, a couple more questions on here or points. Um, Junko Hoshi from California, do we have access to your documents? You have mentioned um, Giselle IDing priority resources, developing monitoring plans, et cetera. Yes, I can share that. So, so Carrie, what's the best? I guess the best way is you can email me um, directly, and I can provide you um, information. Yep. Yes. Sure. I will. Or, or, or Carrie, I should know the answer to this, but isn't is there a place where we could, within the Marathi user community, just kind of post post some of this information? As far as I know, we don't have that yet online, but that's a good note. That's something that we should add, like a discussion forum to the community page. Yeah, maybe that we could do thing. that and then people yeah. could post things there and then that'd be a more centralized hub. That would be great. Um, and then Erica just also reminded us that there's an import function. As you can cut and paste or um, import tables of data. And I've personally imported up to about 350 <laughs> rows at a time. So you can bulk import a lot of data, but it's limited to a certain number of, uh, a limited number of fields right now, about eight, eight or so columns. So um, the editing tools, as Nick just mentioned, and Dan are um, being improved. Um, it looks so like... Is import, oh, go ahead, Giselle. Is the import function in Marathi Share or Marathi Desktop? Marathi Share, I'm assuming. Marathi Share, yep. Okay. Sounds like maybe that's a topic for a future user group. <laughs> How to import and edit yeah. data online. 